Hey guys, welcome back. So today I got something a little bit different. This is a Craftsman push mower and powered by a Briggs & Stratton Quantum Engine. Uh, this one was listed only at $25 and in the listing didn't say much other than it doesn't run. Anyway, it, it looks to be in pretty good shape, pretty clean. Uh, I did pull it over, it has compression. So most likely we're dealing with a dirty carb so I do want to give it a squirt of starting fluid and make sure that the engine itself sounds good. But before I do that, I'm going to check the oil and the blade real quick, and then we'll proceed from there. So let me get you set up a little better and get going on this thing. That oil looks good. It's nice and clean and filled perfectly. Yeah, not too bad. The blade is straight and I mean the deck needs to be cleaned. We'll worry about that later. I'm just going to double check the torque on that bolt. Don't know exactly on this model, but usually 30 foot pounds will do it. I'd say more than half the mowers I pick up, the blades are either damaged, loose, or the wrong blade altogether. In this case, everything looks good. So I'm gonna get the spark plug plugged back in, and just pull it over a few times like this, see if we get any signs of life. Yeah, we didn't get too much, but it, it was sputtering a little bit. So we know we have spark. The compression felt pretty good. Uh, timing, I guess, is a TBD. So I'm going to get the cover off the airbox. We'll give it a squirt of starting fluid and make sure we have a good engine. it's not really doing much on starting fluid. So I'd say we have something else going on besides the carb, most likely timing or possibly a top end issue. So I'm gonna get the covers off the top here. We'll take a look at the flywheel key and see how the timing looks.
Yeah, this is not at all what I was expecting to see. That is the key, and that is the key way on the crank. So they line up, as far as I can tell. The timing's good, at least on the outside. The only thing that would make sense is if the cam somehow jumped time and the valves aren't opening and closing at the right time. So I'm going to give this one a little bit of thought before tearing this engine apart, but I think it's going to have to come apart. All right, it's actually the next day. Wanted to sleep on it, so I resecured this cup, torqued it down. I also pulled the fuel tank off and hooked up this line for the leak down tester. So I started rotating the engine with my thumb on the end here until I got to the compression. And what I thought was compression is actually suction. So that kind of backs up my theory that the valve timing is off. Also, when I do hook up some air, not to do a leak down test, but just to figure out when the valves are opening and closing, discovered something. Right now, the exhaust valve is open. Now the intake is open. So the transition is happening right about there. And that's not right. The transition should actually be happening right about there. So we're a good, I'd say 20 degrees off. And that's all it takes to keep this thing from running. So the camshaft's an issue. I took a look at the part online. The gear and the lobes are plastic and they're pressed onto a metal rod. So something, something moved and now the timing's off. So I've already drained the oil. I'm just gonna tip this up on its side. We'll get the blade and blade adapter off. We'll get the engine removed and we'll open it up and take a look.
Yeah, something moved. There is a tab right here. Hopefully that shows up. This lobe right here is supposed to be kind of between that tab and this cross member here. And it's not, it's moved for sure. And if you look here at the compression release right here, it's bent and it's actually hitting these cross members here. It's supposed to be kind of more in between so that compression release can, can move. But where it is right now, it doesn't move. So even if the timing was on, the valve timing that is, the compression release would not be working correctly. So yeah, we need a new one of these. Okay, the parts are on their way. Wasn't too bad. I found a used cam for about $10. I also got the oil seal and the sump gasket. So all in, I had to spend another 25 bucks to get this thing hopefully in running condition. Anyway, I'm just using this time to clean up the gasket material. Uh, this one's getting pretty close, but I do still need to get some more off. And then once it's mostly off, I'll just use like a fiber disc to get the rest of it off. Anyway, for this, I do use a razor blade, and I recommend caution. This is aluminum. You can scratch it and gouge it pretty easily. So just take your time. This is a slow process. Okay, the new used gear is here. It's the one on the left. And as you can see, this lobe right here roughly lines up with that tab. Completely different from the old one, which is way over here. So this should be good. I've already cleaned it up, looked it over, and I think uh, this one will be good to go. It's hard to see, but that tooth right there has the timing mark on it. So I got a new oil seal, I'm just going to drive the old one out and we'll install the new. And I should have shown you before taking it out, when you put the new one in, you don't want to drive it all the way to the bottom. You want to match to where it was. And in this case, it was about maybe 3 16 of an inch down from the top. Just about it.
All right, ready to give this thing a try. You know, the carb is an unknown to me, so there could be issues there. And even if the carb was fine, you know, we did have the engine upside down and some of that oil could have gotten out of the breather and into the carb, which will cause issues as well. But let's try starting it. Hopefully it starts because this grass is definitely overdue. This thing runs great now that the timing's on. I mean, it, it probably would have started the first pull, but the grass was so long that I couldn't get a good pull because the grass was hitting the blade. Anyway, second pull started right up, had no problems cutting this lawn and uh, tried starting and stopping it a few times, no issues. Looks like we do have a bit of fuel though coming out the top. So I'll have to take a look at that. Maybe that cap is missing a gasket, but all things considered, you know, I picked this up because I thought it would be an easy fix. It's springtime in an easy sell. And yeah, this one threw me for a loop. I'm not sure if I would have identified the issue a year or two ago. This one was an odd one, but you know, a lot of engines now have plastic cams in it. So if it's not starting, you got spark, you got compression, and you have timing, at least on the flywheel, you know, it could be the cam. So double check the valve timing. That could be your issue. Anyway, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching. Okay, a little bit of bonus footage here. I was curious which plastic part rotated on this shaft. So I made a mark right there on the shaft, which aligns with this lobe. And I did the same. Where this timing mark is, I made a mark right there on the shaft. So I'm going to put this in the vise, just turn it and see which piece is actually rotating. And the mark still lines up with this lobe. If we look at the gear itself, there's the timing mark, but the mark is not on the shaft. You gotta rotate it to right about there to find that mark. So now we know it's the gear itself that broke loose on this camshaft. Anyway, thought that could be helpful. Don't know if it's always the gear that breaks loose, but now we know.